Hello, welcome to week 4 of this course Microwave Integrated Circuits. Uh, in the previous uh, modules, in the previous weeks, we had covered uh, the basics of microwave engineering, the various parameters associated with characterizing a circuit like the S parameters and also the method for analyzing. Uh, in this module, we shall be seeing the actual microwave components that are used. So, the way we will be going about discussing these components is based on the number of ports each component has. So, we shall be starting with one port microwave devices first, then we will proceed to two port microwave devices, then to three port microwave devices and so on. So, let us start with one port microwave devices. Now, this module deals only with passive components, uh, we are not discussing the active components which we shall do in later modules. So, and as I said we shall first be discussing one port uh, devices, then uh, we shall be moving on to two port devices and so on. So, let us first see with start with one port devices. Now, a one port device has only one port, therefore, it is reciprocal by default. And if it is lossless, then the unitary condition that is S S H Hermitian is equal to U. This simply translates into S11 square equal to 1, which in turn, uh, so this is the losslessness that will lead to this condition, and from here we can derive that S11 will be equal to 1. Some examples of such one port uh, devices are uh, sh shorts. You know, sometimes we need a shorted load or an open load or a matched load. However, when you are actually making these devices, you have to take into account some aspects. Uh, for example, let us see a shorted termination, shorted termination or short. A shorted termination by definition is just that it, it is a short circuit, but how do we do build such a thing? Now, suppose this is our short, uh, a simple way of implementing a short could be you know to short this is a coaxial cable with an inner conductor and outer conductor. A simple way to implement the short would be to directly connect the inner uh, conductor with the outer conductor. Uh, but the problem with such a simple connection is fringing field, lot of fringing fields will be produced and uh, the quality of the short degrades as frequency increases. So, a better way of implementing the same shot could be that instead of having one single connection between the inner and outer conductor, you might actually have a, a throughout con connection. What I mean is, okay, this is my inner conductor and this is my outer conductor and say this is the other end which is shorted. So, I kind of use a disc rather than a single piece of wire connecting the short, I use the entire bottom of the or the entire base of this inner conductor is connected to the base of the outer conductor. So, this is a better way of uh, implementing a short. Similarly, uh, say if I want to uh, implement an open termination, 
and open termination open termination or simply an open so again suppose i take a cross sectional view of my uh, of my coaxial cable and uh, say if i have if i if i have my outer conductor just till this level this point then there will be a lot of fringing uh, fields and this will cause uh, the quality of the open termination to degrade so that's why the outer conductor when if you to properly implement an open of course i might add here an open termination is very difficult to implement in practice because there will the presence of parasitic cannot be totally in eliminated uh but uh, if you increase uh, the out length of the outer conductor with respect to the inner conductor uh then the fringing fringing capacitance or fringing field problem can be reduced to some extent how to implement a matched loan match load one way to implement is you know a similar way to the shorted load that we saw uh, where we have a disk we have our inner conductor and then instead of shorting it we end our inner conductor with some other material and uh, so this way what happens is that the different conductivity or resistivity of the material introduces a introduces a higher impedance as compared to the short and that's how you get this uh, uh, get that matched load say if your matching required is 50 ohm then by this two kind of conductors one this this part is just a metal and this part is a material of higher resistivity and that both when combined will give uh your match load but then the problem with this uh, kind of implementation implementation is that at the boundary or at the junction between the two that is at the junction of this disk and that of the inner conductor since there is a sharp transition uh the impedance matching will not be perfect and there may be reflections introduced at this boundary between the at the boundary between the inner and the inner conductor and the and the outer and this disk at the base so to avoid that uh, what could be done is uh, we have our same thing same outer conductor but the inner conductor instead of trans going instead of being of the uniform width as shown here the width can slowly change like this so this is like a tapered implementation and because of this taper the impedance matching is more perfect as compared to just a uh, this case where the impedance is 50 ohm but because of the geometry of this structure uh, because of the sharp transition at this end uh, there might be in multiple reflections in a wave guide or in a so these are the these examples that i showed were for uh, two conductor uh, wave guides in single conductor wave guides uh, the way the implementation is made is say this is our wave guide then um, to introduce to avoid having abrupt transitions um can have implementations like this so here this is a wedge shaped structure and instead of having a very abrupt transition from one media to another 
uh, you have a wedge shaped structure which which gradually changes shape and it follows the principle of the taper and thereby avoids multiple reflections or the opposite geometry opposite type of geometry also can be implemented so that is called the spike implementation the spike by opposite i mean instead of this going this way it can come this way uh, so it will be something like this So here uh, we have a pointed spike like structure and that provides a required impedance, impedance mapping. So this is a spike uh, and this is a wedge. So those are uh, some of the one port devices that are commonly used. Let us uh, go to some two port devices. So, two port device for two port devices, we have already discussed the properties of the S parameters earlier. Uh, we just go through them once again. So, we saw that of the four S parameters associated with a two port network. If we just get information about S11 magnitude, the, the phasor or the argument of S11 and the argument of S22, which I call theta2 and the argument of S11 I am calling theta1, then that can completely characterize a lossless and reciprocal system. Now, some of the examples of two port devices are bends, discontinuity, transitions. mode suppressors attenuators and filters now filters are two port devices but then since they are so extensively there is so much variety to these filters uh, we shall be devo devoting the discussion of filters to a separate uh, module uh, but right now let us discuss the other uh, two port devices that are used commonly. So, bends are like you have a transition transmission line traveling in this direction and another transmission line traveling in this direction then the connection between the two is called a bend it is bend because it sort of like bends the direction of the transmission line so two popular designs for these bends are common one is what is known as a radial implementation so radial implementation the outline of that bend follows a circle circular shape and if suppose r is that radius of that circle and w is the width of the transmission line then the rule of thumb is that r should be greater than 3 times w uh, another uh, implementation of the bend is what is called a metered bend So, a simple way of you know 
having a bend could have been this we just connect a, rect a rectangular connection like this. The problem with this is because of the sharp transitions here and here uh, there is the possibility of multiple reflections. So, that is why a metered bend is similar to this rectangular bend except that the outer surface is chamfered like this. And again the rule of thumb is suppose w is the width of the transmission line and a is the length of this section then a should be equal to 1.8 w. The next type of two port device that I was mentioning was uh, a discontinuity. So, the discontinuity is uh, similar to the bend. Uh, in a sense that a bend connects two different transmission lines, uh, a discontinuity connects two different types of, uh, of diff, uh, two transmission lines of different width or different characteristic impedances. Uh, for example, say you have one transmission line of this width and another of this width and suppose this is the outer conductor. So, say you have two coaxial lines which are of different thickness where the inner conductors are of different thickness and therefore, of different uh, different characteristic impedances. So, this structure that kind of connects a coaxial cable of this width to a coaxial cable of this inner width, this is that discontinuity. Uh, so, one way of implementing is just this direct connection between the two. Uh, uh, another way of implementing uh, is what is known as a gap implementation. So, in a gap implementation you do not connect them instead leave a gap between and the inter capacitance the inter transmission line capacitance is the way in which the power is the media through which the power is delivered from one waveguide to another. So, this is a gap implementation this capacitance uh, does not actually exist this is just I have shown as a symbol this is the capacitance between the two. Uh, there is no connection between this conductor, this inner uh, conductor of a different width with this inner conductor of a different width. Sometimes uh, you know you want to introduce an inductive uh, parameter within a waveguide. Uh, so, So, suppose you have a, a waveguide like this, and you add two metallic strips which connects the surfaces which have greater width. So, in this waveguide, like there are uh, let me draw it uh, in a different uh, let me draw it. it might not be clear from the previous figure. So, we have a uh, waveguide So, if uh, 
we have these strips along connecting the surfaces which have uh, the greater width of the two surfaces, then this produces an inductive effect. Now, in single conductor waveguides, you might ask me what is an inductive effect? It simply means that the electric field is made, the phase of the electric field after passing through this is ahead of the uh, ahead of the phase of the magnetic field. So, that is the inductive effect. Recall we had defined impedance also as the ratio of E and H field. Now, if you can go back to this uh, slide, monitor slide for a moment, uh, here we can see that more clearly. So, if we have these metal strips connecting the surfaces which have the greater width, then uh, this produces an inductive effect, and if we have these uh, metal strips connecting the uh, surfaces that have the lesser width as shown here, then this produces a capacitive effect. And uh, if both are present, then it basically results in a inductive combined inductive and capacitive effect, which uh, basically is that of a resonator. So, if we can come back to our written slides. So, some of the other, so this is like that the previous discussion was for introducing inductive and capacitive effects in waveguides. What if we have the same problem as that of the coaxial discontinuity? That is, we have one coaxial cable of a particular inner conductor width and we want to con connect it to another coaxial conduct uh, cable of a different inner conductor width. So, let us see that case. So, suppose we have one waveguide like this and connected to another waveguide like this. Then this is actually a capacitance, this, act, this actually produces a capacitive effect. It can be modeled by a shunt capacitor. On the other hand, so here the discontinuity is along the edge, uh, along the edge which is the lesser width of the two. So, this is one edge, this is another edge. This edge has the lesser width and this discontinuity is along that edge. The other edge, that that length or width of the other or the broader edge remains the same. Now, if we do it in the other way, that is if the discontinuity is along the broader edge rather than the thinner edge, then it will look something like this. And that will actually be an inductive effect. So, that can be modeled by this shunt inductor. Then uh, there is a another class of uh, two port uh, devices that are known as transitions. Now, when you connect your PCB board to the to some device, some source or some measurement device like a spectrum analyzer. The way it is usually done is that suppose this is a piece of transmission line on your PCB board, then something called a launcher is connected like this and that launcher leads to a output, output point uh, which is, uh, so here then you connect your external uh, cable is connected to this output point. So, there are several types of launchers, some of them are called SMA, BNC like this and uh, for example, an SMA uh, transition, if the SMA launcher is shaped like this and its equivalent circuit is like a low pass filter, a ply implementation of a low pass filter. So, this is one end of this launcher, say this end and this is the other end both are matched to Z0 characteristic impedance and uh, the 
inner circuit or the central conductor provides an inductive effect whereas the metal stacked one over another produces a capacitive effect. So, that is how uh, it is done. If you could come back to our uh, written slide, one uh, another type of uh, launch launcher or transitions uh, that is frequently used uh, uh, especially when you are going from two conductor waveguide to a single conductor waveguide. So, if you want to have a two conductor waveguide and as I said two conductor waveguides conduct via PEM mode. Uh, to a single conductor and single conductor waveguides cannot transmit PEM mode, uh, they have to uh, transmit to either a TE or TM mode. Now, for a cable uh, or for a rectangular uh, uh, waveguide, TE10 is the dominant mode dominant mode is that mode which has the lowest cutoff frequency. So, in a two conductor waveguide the power transmission is through the TEM mode and in a rectangular waveguide TE10 is the dominant mode. So, we have to have a converter which goes from T which converts a TEM wave to a TE10. Let us uh, see how it is done. So, this, the construction of that uh, is like this, this is your coaxial cable and this is your waveguide. In a coaxial cable, the mode is TEM, therefore, the electric field lines are radial from the central conductor, and uh, as the field's electric power reaches the inner uh, surface of the waveguide, the field uh, pattern or the electric field lines change like this. And on this side, there is a pi by 2 length of the waveguide given. What this does is that any wave that flows along this direction will be reflected back and add constructively to this wave that is proceeding along this direction. So, this is how uh, this is a coaxial to rectangular. adapter or transition. Then we have attenuators. Uh, now, attenuators are well known. Any resistive network can provide attenuation. However, in addition to providing the power loss, the attenuator, attenuator should also provide impedance matching. And uh, to do that, uh, say you have a simple rectangular waveguide, uh, you can make an attenuator by keeping some material of high resistivity within that waveguide. That will cause some of the power to be lost in this uh, high resistivity material and the remaining material and the remaining power to be transferred. A better way of implementing this is uh, instead of having any arbitrary shaped uh, structure inside, if we have a structure or a card inside this waveguide that, uh, that is sinusoidal shaped, then the electric field lines some point of time will be oriented nicely along this sinusoidal shape and since the electric field itself is sinusoidal shape, the attenuation will be more perfect, there will be less reflections because of the absence of, because the shape of the electric field will perfectly match with this attenuator and so spurious reflections 
will not happen. As far as uh, resistive uh, networks are concerned, we can make an attenuator simply using a T or pi network. Say we have as I said an attenuator is very simple to visualize because it has to provide power loss, attenuation is nothing but power loss. So, these two shape these two structures immediately come to mind when we talk about attenuator. This is a T implementation, this is a pi implementation. Now, in the book by Pozar, uh, in order to uh, a solution for this implementation is given. Uh, suppose you need a alpha attenuation, attenuation of alpha that is P out over P in, then that is given by S21 square provided the inputs are matched and the design equations are that R1 should be equal to 2 Z0 into 1 minus alpha upon 1 plus alpha R2 should be equal to Z0 square minus R1 square by 4 upon 1 plus alpha and for this implementation, implementation this pi implementation G1 should be equal to 2 Y0 into 1 minus alpha over 1 plus alpha and G2 should be equal to y0 square minus p1 square by 4. So, the equations are basically the dual of each other. Now, one final uh, two port device that I would like to discuss is what is known as a mode suppressor. So, a mode suppressor is a device is a circuit which allows certain modes to pass through and does not allow other modes to pass through. Let us see this particular circuit. This is a cylindrical waveguide with some concentric metal structures present here and this is another structure which uh, has instead of having concentric metal wires, we have radial metal wires. It can be shown that this is uh, what is known as a TE01 reflector and this is a TM01 reflector. You can prove this that this will not allow T01 to pass through and this will not allow T, uh, TM01 to pass through. Uh, the solution for TE and TM waves is given in uh, for a cylindrical waveguide is given in the book by Poza. Just the hint to this proof is that since these are concentric metal wires, so here the E theta, this is in polar coordinates, the, I beg your pardon, the E phi component will be 0 because these are concentric metal line wires. So, they will nullify the radial the tangential component of the electric field and these will nullify the radial component of the electric field. Now, it can be shown that if the radial component if the tangential component of the electric field is nullified then the T E 0 1 mode will cease to exist and similarly if the radial component of the electric field is nullified then the TM01 component will cease to exist. So, these are some of the two port devices that are commonly used. Of course, as I said filters are also examples of uh, two port devices, but we shall cover them in a separate module. In the next module we shall cover three port devices. Thank you.